New Relic Insights allows you to collect and analyze data about your business's user behavior, transactions, customer insights, and more. This tutorial will cover how to navigate and use the Insights tutorial page and query bar, how to find and view your data in the Data Explorer, and how to create queries and charts using the Data Explorer. We'll start with a quick tour of the Insights query page. When you first go to Insights, you will land on this query page. You can also navigate here by clicking the Query tab at the top of the left bar menu. At the top of this page is the Query bar, where you can immediately start writing queries about your data. I'll go over more about this tool in a moment. First, I want to highlight a few great features about the tutorials on this page. If you look below the Query bar, you'll see three tabs. The default active tab is the Tutorials. The tutorials on this page are a really great way to orient yourself to using Insights. You can work your way through each section, or just click around until you find the info you need. You can get info about how to get data into Insights under the Collect section. Under the Analyze section, you'll find info and examples to help you write both basic and advanced queries. You can see your data in action right away using the sample queries. Simply click the Try Me button to create a chart with your current data. Next to that, you'll find info about creating dashboards under the Present tab. And finally, you'll find info about how to manage your Insights account and your data under the Manage tab. If you ever get stuck, this is a really great place to get some help. Going back up to the first tab menu under the Query bar, the next tab to the right of Tutorials is History, where you can see a list of your recent queries. You can view data in chart form from any query in your history list by simply clicking on it to run it again. And to the right of that is the Favorites tab, where you can see any queries you have favorited. To add queries to your favorites, go to your history list and hover over a query. When you do this, you'll see a star appear to the far right on that query line. Simply click the star to add it to your favorites. There are also some very handy features in the command line query tool. Even if you're not completely proficient at NRQL queries, you can use the prompts to guide your query creation. Simply start typing, and you will see prompts offered at each section of the query. You can click on the words that appear or hit the Tab key to insert them. These prompts are the suggestions for NRQL clauses, functions, attributes, or events that may fit into that part of the query based on the structure of the query as it is up to that point. These suggestions are not comprehensive. Rather, they are based on the last hour of event data sent to New Relic Insights. Once you complete your query, click the Run button or hit Enter to run the query and generate the chart. At this point, you will usually have a few chart options, as well as the ability to view the data your query returned in JSON format. You also have the option to favorite a query, embed a chart, give it a title, add notes, and link the chart to a dashboard. I'll go over more about dashboards in a later video. For now, let's continue exploring your Insights account. As you begin to explore, it's helpful to know what data you have available in order to write queries. If you already have the New Relic agent for APM or mobile installed, or have enabled browser, Insights will immediately start collecting data, even if you haven't used Insights before. Insights data is collected from your APM account's transactions, your mobile account's interactions, and page view events from browser. You can find this data by clicking on the Data Explorer icon in the left bar menu. The Data Explorer page provides a visual display of all the data Insights collects about your app. Before I go into details about this page, I want to show you how to view the data in a more conventional, tabular format, in case you just need to get some specific information quickly. First, start by selecting the event type you want to view. To do this, click on the drop-down menu at the top to the right of the title Data Explorer. You will see a list of available event types and your custom event types. For now, I'm going to stay on Page View Events. Next, select the time window you want to view data for by clicking the drop-down menu to the right of Event Types. I'm going to select Since One Day Ago to see the last 24 hours of data. All of the data visible on this page will be filtered by these two menus automatically. If you have been using this page to filter and sort data, any filters that are still engaged will limit the data presented. Because I want to see all page view data for the last 24 hours, I'm going to make sure to check that there aren't any other filters engaged on the page that may affect the data I see. 
Finally, I'll scroll down to the See All Examples button under the main chart and click that to open a window with all my data for page view events over the last 24 hours. Notice if I scroll to the right, I can see all the possible attributes available in a tabular format. I can also view all possible attributes available for my selected event type in a list view format underneath the chart. I can click the left and right arrows to scroll through individual events and see how each attribute's values are recorded. In both the table and list view formats, I can hover over an attribute name to see the queryable attribute name format, rather than just the human readable one. This is handy when I need to use these attributes in my queries, and I'm not sure of the exact query format off the top of my head. The Data Explorer page has a few other really helpful features for constructing queries and exploring your data. Notice at the top of the page there's a query bar that shows the actual NRQL query I would use to create a chart in an Insights dashboard or data app. This query will automatically update as I click on different sorting, filtering, and faceting features on this page. I also want to note that all the queries on this page will use the time series function. This is primarily because most New Relic data is, or is based on, time series, making the time series function the best way to display your data in the most meaningful way possible. All these features are designed to make querying my data and constructing charts easy. I don't necessarily have to know NRQL, or even be really familiar with a query language to use Insights. I can dig into my data and learn more about my app and my end users right away. So I'm going to walk through these features now, and we'll get to see the query bar automatically update to reflect the changes I make by clicking on options below. At any point, I can turn the query into a chart that I can add to a dashboard by simply clicking the Run button. I can then give the chart a title and select a dashboard to add the chart to. Again, I'll go over how to create, edit, and manage dashboards and data apps in a later video. For now, I'll close this window. Okay. Let's take a look at the query features and see what kinds of queries and charts we can make. When I first navigate to the Data Explorer page, the default query is a count of page views, and a comparison of that count now to a week ago. I can mouse over the chart to see individual data points about this comparison. To the left of the chart is the Group By menu. This is a list of the most relevant attributes for my selected event type. These attributes are organized into categories like View, geography, browser, application, identity attributes, and so on. The categories change based on the event type's available attributes. I can click on any of these attributes to change the chart so that it facets, or groups, data by that criteria. If for some reason I don't see the attribute I want to group by, I can use the search bar to get that specific attribute. Notice that when I click on an attribute in the Group By menu, the list disappears, and that menu becomes a filtering option for the chart. If I click on City, I'll see a chart showing the number of page view events by the cities that the pages were viewed in. I can filter the data even further by clicking on a city, which will then give me a chart showing all the page views in my selected time window for that single specific city. If I want to filter by a different attribute, I can turn the existing attribute filter off by simply clicking the attribute at the top a second time, and the Group By menu reappears. Notice that when I do this, the Facet, or Grouping function, stays engaged until I click the Remove Facet link at the top of the Group By list. I have another filtering option in addition to the Group By menu. The search bar at the top of the page next to the drop-down menus for event type and time window will allow me to add as many additional filters as I want. As I add filters, a box appears at the top displaying the criteria data is being filtered by. I can easily remove these filters by clicking on the X in the upper right corner of the box. Finally, the drop-down menu in the upper left corner of the chart next to the title Plot allows me to change the Y axis of the chart by another attribute. This feature is really great for creating more complex queries in a smart, context-sensitive way. The resulting chart will be based on the attribute type I select. For example, if I select a numeric attribute, the chart changes from just a count function to an average 95th or 99th percentile or sum function. And if I select an attribute whose value is a string or non-numeric value, the chart will use the unique count function. 
The resulting chart will show me the frequency in which the currently displayed events with a particular attribute occur over the time window I have set for my chart. Now we've covered the most important and helpful features on the Data Explorer page. Depending on the data you have available, there may be many more great ways for you to filter, facet, sort, and display your data. The best way to discover this is to jump right in and start exploring your data. Now that you understand how to navigate and use the Insights Tutorials, Query Bar, and Data Explorer, you're ready to dive into your Insights data and begin creating charts to help you better understand your app's users. In the next video, we'll go over how to create dashboards and data apps using your data.